everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back to my channel. And in this video, I am working on a quick little birthday card. So I thought it'd be fun to just take you along on this little card build and show you a little bit of what I'm working on. So I'm going to be using two stamp sets and one is this cute little stamp set. I've used it a couple times before on my channel, but it's from Tailored Expressions. It's called Hip Hip Hooray. It's really cute. I'm going to use it for a sentiment. And then this stamp set I actually got as a freebie. I like to shop at scrapbook.com from time to time, and every once in a while they will do a free gift with purchase. And I actually didn't know that this was one of the items that was free during one of my orders and so I thought it would be fun I tucked it away this isn't something that I would normally pick out for myself and purchase so I thought it would be fun to just get creative with something that was sent and was a little freebie and maybe something that I wouldn't normally choose for myself but I'm going to just try to put my own creative spin on it and have some fun so I'm gonna go ahead and use those two things I'll link everything down in the description box below I've also had a lot of questions on how I store my stamps so I'll be sure to stamp my little storage pockets down below I also have a really fun label maker that I have been using that I really love. And then I also will be linking my marker storage for my alcohol markers because I've been asked quite a few times to link those bins and so, or that bin, and I will have that all down in the description box below. So let's go ahead and get started. We're just gonna start by getting something stamped and then we're gonna do lots of coloring. So bringing in my Misty, I love, love, love this for stamping and I'm going to really quickly add a panel and I just have an A2 size panel so it is four and a quarter by five and a half and then I will start by doing the little animals. So this is definitely again something that I would not purchase myself but I love a challenge and I think well first of all my kids saw this and they just think it's so cute and one of the things that stole my heart about this was I love the little party hat so there's a little party hat on here I've been actually playing around with stamping these out because lately my kiddos have really enjoyed having me stamp out little scenes for them and then we all can sit down and color so we've been having fun with this stamp set but I wanted to um, just mention that you know sometimes if it's not your initial um, I don't know not something you gravitate towards go ahead and just have fun anyway and use it as a challenge right okay so I'm gonna use three of the animals and the ones I chose were um, this little cute puppy here and then this dog as well as this dog here. So I do did those three and then as you can see there's a lot of fun little hats. So there's a graduation cap, a top hat, a Santa hat, it looks like a little more Valentine's Day hat, there's a unicorn horn and I thought these were really cute but I wanted to do the little birthday hat so that's the one that I went ahead and grabbed. So I'll go ahead and really quickly just stamp these down or get them cleaned up very quickly and then I am going to actually do some coloring on them with alcohol markers so I am going to use my Memento Tuxedo Black because it works well and plays nicely with the alcohol markers and being pretty careful here because this little I think it's a Boston Terrier but he has quite a bit of surface area that we want to get a nice even impression on so let's go ahead and do an initial press and I like to use just a little washcloth just to get a nice smooth rub on the door. They also make tools that you can, ooh, that was actually a really good first impression. Okay, let me go ahead and ink it up one more time. Um, they also make tools that you can use to help, you know, put pressure on, oh my goodness gracious, put pressure on the stamp door. But you know, the washcloth is free and 
it works for me. Look at I'm rhyming. The washcloth is free and it works for me. Okay. There we go. There we are. Okay, let's check that. Ooh, that looks amazing. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to let my ink sit for just a few minutes before I start coloring, even though it is an alcohol friendly um, ink. I just have built it into my workflow to just give it a second to set. That way I don't have any bleeding when I go to color. So really quickly, I am just cleaning off my stamps and I'll clean those up, put them away. And then I'm going to show you what markers I'm gonna pull for this fun little cart. Okay, so this is the little storage bin that everyone's been asking about. This is how I store my alcohol markers. It has six, or is it six or six? No, it's eight. Eight individual little sections. And the four corners, I think, are the biggest. And then there, these are kind of smaller sections in here. So I have them, you know, color-coded by you know, pinks, yellows, browns, um, et cetera, et cetera. But I love this. And then in the little, um, eighth area, I just have my little color swatches, which I love. And this has been working really, really well for me. So I will go ahead and link this down below so that you can, um, take a look at it. It's a great way to store the markers. I find that it's really easy to really quickly find what I need and grab because they're color coded pretty well. Um, but it's been working for me. So I'll go ahead and just share that information down below since you've been asking. Okay. So I pulled the markers that I'm going to be using and I actually did swatch them out when I was coloring with the kiddos the other day just to see what I would like to use. So I have them all here if you want to take a little photo of that. The only one that we are going to end up not using is the CG2, only because originally I had pulled four cute little animals and I ended up um, deciding to only go with three. So these are the colors that we are going to use or I'm gonna use. And um, again, go ahead and um, just take a little photo of that if you would like and if I can I'll link them down in the description box below if I forget they're right there Okay, so really quickly. I personally love I love to just tape my little panel down And let's go ahead and start coloring. So I am going to start with I'm gonna start with the BR1 and I'm going to use my fine tip I'm gonna use the BR1 and then the Y11. And those are the two browns I'm going to use for this first cutie pie. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my dark color in with my precision tip along this left side here, here. And then I'm gonna bring up at the top of his little head. And bring some right here. And I think I'm gonna be about good. Okay, and then I'm gonna take the lighter of the two, so my Y11, and go ahead and pull any markers that you would like, but I'm just gonna kinda start blending out that darker. Oops, I ran out of the lines a little bit. It'll be okay. And Blending out here. So just pulling that darker down and out. And I love this color combo. It's actually the first kind of opportunity I've had to use this color combo, but I don't know, I really like it. And then just continue to pull out where needed. And then I'm just going to do one layer throughout the rest, one layer of this final marker. And being mindful that, you know, there's really no bottom to their, I think, aren't they called peeking pets? So, you know, it kind of does a little cut off at the mouth. So you just kind of can creatively decide where to stop coloring there. And then finish up. Okay. And then I'm just going to smooth out any 
other little transition that I need to and I actually really like how that's looking. Okay, so there is our first little dog and so those two can go. The next one I'm going to do is let's I am going to do the R21 for the, I'm going to do some rosy cheeks on all of them, so that'll be really nice and fun. But next, what I'll do, oops, just a little bit right here. Okay, the next one I will do is, um, well, let's bring this in because I'm going to do some nice, cute little ears. So I'm going to just do some blending with one marker. So I'm gonna do about three-ish coats of this R21. And I believe this is the, yeah, fruit pink. It's pretty. And again, just doing multiple coats, three to four coats, just to really bring that color in and then I'll just use the brush tip on the other side to just blend that out and we'll just do some nice pink roots there okay and then for this we are actually going to have this little cutie pie be white but I'm gonna bring in this CG200 and I'm going to just do a little bit of shading just to bring a little bit of depth so I'll do just kind of around the ears maybe around the little hair up here and then up through here and I think that will be about good and then what I'm going to do is just very very lightly just feather just very ever so lightly just a little bit right there okay I'm calling that good and then I'm gonna bring back this pink and we're going to do some cute little cheeks so one and two and then I'll just go ahead and do one and two okay now what we'll do is set this to the side actually I can go ahead and do some cheeks right here this little cutie doesn't need any coloring at all. It's pretty much one and done with the nice black ink and I like how that looks. So now what I think I'll do is bring in my yellows. I'm gonna do Y2 and Y3 and I'm going to start on this little party hat. I'm gonna color my left side and bring that darker of the two yellows in. This is a little bit more of a mustard color. And then I will grab my lighter with the brush tip and just kind of brush that out but also get some nice yellow in there okay just kind of a nice mustard and sunny yellow combo i think that looks really nice and then while i have my yellow out i am going to do a little rainbow on the party hat so what i'll do is just find the band that i want to be yellow and I'm gonna do, again, my darker shadow on the left side, and then bring out the lighter and just blend that. Perfect. Now I can just go ahead and start on my rainbow. So I will grab my RP6 and R23, and I'm going to just start doing a little rainbow order. Whoopsie, let me stay there. And again, shadowing on the left, pulling out with my lighter color towards the right. And I like to pull with the brush tip. You can do coloring however you would like. Uh, YR and YR4 will be my orange. And then I'm only going to use one for my green band. The 
GY4. And so when you're just using one marker for blending, just do multiple layers for your shadow. And you can always go back in and add a little bit more, you know, and then just pair it with one layer for your blending. Okay, and then I'm going to do, this is the BG68. It's a nice turquoise blue for the blue. Again, one color for this blend. And as you can see, the blue and the purple R11, they are going to be so tiny that we really aren't going to have much opportunity for blending. But there, there it is. Okay, so that is all in terms of coloring. Super fast, super easy. I think that looks really, really nice. Now the thing about this little set is that I don't have the coordinating dies. Um, again, this was one of those free gifts with purchases, and so I just tucked it away to challenge myself to use something like this that's, you know, something that's a little bit out of my, uh, uh, how do I say? Not something I would initially buy, although I'm falling in love with this. This is pretty darn cute. Um, so I did not end up getting the coordinating dies. I believe they probably have them. If they do, I'll find them and link them down below. But I'm just gonna fussy cut these out they seem easy enough. You can use, I'm going to go ahead um, and just trim the bottom off because I can use this little piece for my sentiment later. You can use small little scissors for fussy cutting. My little hands just don't love tiny little scissors. Um, and I find that I am just fine with <laughs> big scissors. So use scissors of your choice for fussy cutting, whatever you'd like. And then just kind of give yourself an idea for how much of a outline shadow layer that you would like. And then simply follow and fussy cut. Okay. And try not to stress too much about it. I feel like, especially when I do this with card making and embroidery, I always stress, you know, about perfection. But even the little bits of areas where you find that you may think it's so noticeably imperfect, you're really not going to notice later. So give yourself a lot of grace here. Okay, so I'll go ahead and just continue fussy cutting these little cutie pies out. How fun are they? And then we will move on to, we're going to do a little ink blending on our card panel to get that all fun and cute. So meet you back here in just a second. So I, I did that pretty quickly. I thought that was fairly easy. They're very basic little shapes there. And then I think I'm going to do the little hat on this little cutie. That's super fun. Okay, so now what I will do is I'm going to bring in another A2 size panel. I pre-trim down my panels just so that when I'm working on cards, I'm not slowed down by going to my paper trimmer and trimming down pieces of paper. So I just like to have them pre-trimmed and ready to go. Okay, so I have my little blender brush here. I'm going to be using this pretty mermaid color and it's from Lawn Fawn. I really, really like it. Here you go, camera. There you go. And I just have a little cute little ink cube of it. I am already starting to just pull and tap off some of the ink. I'm going to go pretty light on this. I want to do more of like a halo look 
and just do just some pretty basic color. Um, and I just want to have a lot of white space on this card, but I also want to make it fun and bright as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some 80 pound cardstock. I'll link it down below. It is the Nina brand. I really love it. I learned this brand from Kathy Zilski. If you haven't subscribed to her channel yet, please go do so now because she is phenomenal with card making. Anyway, I saw the paper on her channel. I know that she uses it quite often and loves it. So listen, I'm all for that. And I grabbed some and I have fallen in love with it as well. So I'm going to just take some of this color, tap it off. You can always add more, but you can't take away. So I like to start going pretty light. And again, I don't want this to be, you know, a lot, a lot. I just want it to be there. I want it to be present again, kind of like a little glow or a halo. And I'm thinking of, you know, just focusing on a little bit, I should tap that off a little bit, a little bit of an oval in terms of shape. And I will further trim this down in just a little bit. So I want it to be pretty basic. Okay, and, I, and I'm really, I really mean it. It's going to be just there, but not a ton. I'm going to add just a little bit more. Just kind of want a glow look. Make it fun, but it's not going to be stealing the show. It's just going to be su the supporting actor here. Okay. Kind of just fade up into that thing. Okay, I like that. It's just a nice subtle little glow that will just kind of provide a fun little backdrop. So I'm just going to kind of go near the edges a little bit just to kind of pull the color out but not bring any more in. Okay, so that's where I'm going to go with that. Now what I'll do is I'm going to grab really quickly a little A2 die and I'm going to trim this panel down just a hair just to add a little framing and visual interest to the card and I think I'm going to do right about there and then I think quite honestly I think I'm going to flip this and have this be the top but we'll see in a minute so let me go run this through my spell binders really quick off camera and then we will continue oops we will continue building up this sweet little card and finishing it up okay there we go set so I think I think I might flip it oh, now I don't remember because I don't know which way I put it in my my machine um, I think I'm gonna flip it this way I'm trying to see which way I like the the ink better but okay so now I'm going to really quickly bring in a piece of my 110 pound card stock and again we're just going to make the base so I will grab my little score pal and again focusing on an A2 size card. So we're going to, going to do four and a quarter by five and a half. And I already have it trimmed down. So I'm going to score it at four and a quarter. And very quickly make a really nice card base. I love the 110 pound. It's so, uh, it's just beautiful. And I'm just going to clean off before I get ink everywhere. That would be just like me at the very end, you know? Okay, putting this little guy back and bringing this in. So what I'll do is I'm going to pop this up with some foam tape. I have some foam tape here. Please do not ask what in the world happened to it. Let's just say I was cleaning my craft room and maybe ran over it with my desk chair. I think that's what happened, to be honest. To be honest, I don't even know. I just remember gasping and being like, oh my, <laughs> my foam tape. It's all fine, but you know, it looks a little, it looks a little uh, tired, doesn't it? This foam tape has had a rough day. So I'm just gonna add some strips to the back. 
That way we can pop up our little card base. And I'm doing this now just because I want to further pop up the cute little um, puppies on the front. So I just kind of find it easier if you're going to do multiple dimensional items to just go ahead and build from the ground up. So that's just me, but it's been working so far. Okay, let me peel these little guys off. I love this um, foam tape, but the little strips um, that protect the adhesive, if you will, they, in fact, I used the wrong scissors doing that because I don't want to get the other scissors all icky. So this is my sticky, sticky stuff scissors. Um, they fall off kind of easily, which is not really necessarily a bad thing because sometimes there's other foam tapes where I think that it takes way too long to get those little adhesive backs off. Okay, I'm centering this. And there we go. Okay, so now from here, we're just going to build up this sweet little card. I think it's gonna turn out really cute. So I'm going to do this little guy in the middle. I think that would be really fun, just to also break up some of the color. And then I also wanna do it because the height on the other two um, with their ears I think would be fun to have on the ends plus I think I will do the little hat on the dog there so I think that would be really nice too just to have have it going with this okay so what I'll do really quickly is I'm going to add some foam tape to the back of all of these pieces and that way they can just kind of really pop up off of the card really nicely there and get a little height to themselves. So I will work from the center out and I'm going to have them just hugging the bottom of the card because it's like they're peeking, right? They're just kind of peeking over. Okay, hopefully I have enough room there myself enough room. I might need to pull this cutie pie over just a little bit, of course. Oops, I'm so sorry. Okay, gently, gently, gently. Okay. This is why I usually use my tweezers because sometimes when you use your fingers, there's just too much, too much going on visually that you can't, it kind of, you can't see. Whoopsie. this little fella in. And I just love the glow of the aqua color behind. I think that's really, really fun because I, I do want to have a lot of negative space on this card. I don't want to fill it up. I want it to just kind of be, you know, really focused on the bottom. But I feel like that little halo area just makes it super interesting. Okay, how cute, I love it. Okay, adding just a little bit more for our little hat. And I think that should be just about good for this little card. I need to trim this guy down a little bit more. And I want the hat to be tilted. I think that'd be really fun. Oh, look at you. So cute. Okay, now I want to focus on the sentiment. So I think, see, I left this off to the side. This was just our little scrap paper from when we did some stamping. And let's pull this up and over and put this little guy away. And really quickly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use a little acrylic block and I'm going to free range stamp, which makes me so nervous, but I have been trying to challenge myself with doing so just to, just to practice and, you know, zero risk, right? Because you can always redo it. 
you can always redo it. Practice is a good thing. So, hip hip hooray is the sentiment that I chose. I thought that was super, super simple and super fun, but, and honestly just so fitting for this cute little card. Okay, now I'm going to grab even though I'm not going to be stamping, or um, excuse me, coloring next, I, I'm just going to use the same ink and ink this up really well. One thing about free range stamping though is you're pretty much one and done. So you, you know, with the Misty, you can re, re stamp fairly easily, but, um, with this, unless you are perfect at lining things up, it's kind of hard to restamp. Okay, let's see. Love it. Wow, good job. Okay, love it when you're intimidated by something, but the practicing just gives you a deep breath each and every time. So, you know, embrace, embrace that practice that comes with learning new things. Okay. Because it's really gratifying when you see yourself achieve and celebrate the small wins. Okay. So I'm going to put that little cutie back and now I'm going to bring out my paper trimmer so that I can trim this down. What I'm thinking of doing is creating a little banner that comes, it's gonna be right, uh, no, I'm just gonna be left justified. So I want to trim, I'm just gonna kind of keep an eye on this as I, as I go and make decisions, kind of as I measure. So I know I wanna take off a little bit from this side Okay, probably about right there. That looks nice. Okay, and then, and then just I'm gonna do a little a little banner work myself with some scissors. I have some banner sentiment dies on their way, but they just did not arrive in time. So no problem. That looks pretty good. And I'm trying to do it even. Okay. Okay. That's going to work. Okay, so now I will, I think that looks pretty good. Um, grab my scissors here and I'm going to do just a little, a little simple banner on the side. So coming in from the bottom, halfway at a diagonal. Oh, oh darn. Totally messed that up. You want to know why? We're having a huge thunderstorm right now. Huge thunderstorm right now, and it's it just totally caught me off guard. Eek. Okay, I wonder if I can fix that. I probably can't fix it, but I, I kind of think I'm gonna go with it. Okay. Oh, you know I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't go with that. Goodness, thunder. I did all of that good stamping and trimming, and that's how it's gonna end up. It's gonna be with the darn scissors at the end. Oh! Okay, but you know what? Maybe this is meant to be, it's just saying, hey, let's practice free range stamping one more time. But seriously, the storm, everybody, it is, it is. I love summer thunderstorms. It's so fun. Okay, I do have another little piece that I can use. And let's just redo it. Am 
might have to wait a second because now like the thunder is rolling outside and I don't want to mess up again okay well let's see how far did we trim that off because maybe I will just make it so that I don't have to do one trim there okay work smarter not harder Practicing again with my free range stamping. Bring it up. That looks awesome. It's the little winds. It's the little winds. Cleaning off my stamp. Okay. Let me trim this all down. You saw me do it once. You know the drill. It's going to be me overthinking it for a few minutes. And then we'll finish up this card. Okay. Do it again not too shabby okay now let's okay let's try this again okay halfway and halfway on this one and oh it's, just hanging. it's like it's like a loose tooth it's just hanging on by that last little bit okay Ooh, you know what I don't think that I could have done it better okay loving that so I want I'm going to use foam tape on this you could just glue it right to your card base but why not just add one more little piece of dimension here and finish it off all strong. Okay. Right there, right here, and it is tweezer time. Okay, here we go. And I'm thinking right here. I like. I like a lot. And I'm just going to line it up with the inner panel. Line it down. Just like that. Oh, cute. Okay, I really like that. I really like that. Oops, you scoot out of here. Okay, now I'm going to add a couple finishing things. I have these really pretty raindrop embellishment that uh they're kind of like little dew drops they're so pretty and ooh, that thunder okay sorry it's just we are having a heck of a storm so i'm going to grab i think i'll do yeah two two big one small and then let me grab glue and we're also going to do a little wink of stella because because it's gonna be cute okay Ooh, I got a little inky so let's see I'm going to do let's lay these out I'm just gonna do three just to bring a little bit of fun here but I don't want to do a, you know I, again I'm, I really want that negative space here so I'm gonna do one two and three I think that's fun exactly what I want. Okay, let me grab a little glue. Let's put those cuties down. And it'll be all set. Now, I do like this Avery L glue. Whoops, other side. It does come out a little quickly, so I'm just being mindful of that. I do have the little precision bottles. I really probably should just put some in in that bottle, but I haven't yet. And I feel like I'm getting control of, of the flow more and more. I like that. I love these little glass, or I don't know, I'm sure they're not glass, but I love these little kind of glass looking beads. I think they are just so pretty. I love that. Okay. 
done with that. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little wink of Stella to the pom-pom of the birthday hat because it's just so cute. So hopefully the camera picks this up, but I just have, I feel like mine's, I don't know if it has the actual color name on here. I think it's just gold. I'll try to link it down below, but I'm just going to focus on painting just the little hat pom-pom. And I'll hold it up in a second and see if you can get an appreciation for how gorgeous, oh no, how gorgeous it is. It just totally came out. I installed mine wrong, I have to say. How do I fix, how do I fix? I think I, oh! Just like that. Just dabbed it off. Okay, you know what? It's not ruined. It is not ruined. I, I think I installed mine wrong when I bought it because it's just kind of going everywhere. So next time I'm at the craft store, I'm just going to grab a new one and be, I don't know. I don't know what I was doing when I installed it, but when I was opening it up, it just didn't feel right. I felt like I may have damaged it or something, obviously. Okay, finished finished little card. I really like it. Okay, let's see if you can get a hint of that glitter from the pom-pom. Oh, there you go. Sure can. What do you think? I think it's cute. I think it's simple. I think it's fun. I think it was a good challenge for myself because again, it was a fun little freebie. Thank you so much, scrap, scrapbook.com. That was really fun. I love it when they do little free um, gifts with purchase. I think that's so fun. Um, but again, you know, something that maybe wouldn't have jumped in my cart originally, but now I'm really excited to have this little stamp set on hand because look at the fun things you can do with this. I think it's so fun. And plus there's so many other things. I think I might've put it away, but there's so many other little critters on there and other fun hats. You could, you know, make this into a graduation card. You could definitely do a Christmas theme because they had a Santa hat. It also had, let me just grab, let me just grab it. Okay, so it also had, oh, these cute little heart ears, if you will, which could be fun for Valentine's Day, but just so many fun things. So I can appreciate that about a stamp set as well, because, you know, this is not seasonally dependent. You can do so many different things with it, which really, really makes your stamps go a little bit longer and further because you're not, you know, having to wait for a certain time of year to use them. So. I think it turned out really cute. I hope you enjoyed this as well. I thought it was really fun to make. Um, and I really enjoyed that I got to practice a little bit more of my coloring and um, ink blending as well. And I think it just turned out really, really sweet. So please be sure to give this a thumbs up if you enjoy watching. And I will again, be sure to link everything that I use in the description box below. And I hope you're having a lovely day and I hope even more to see you in the next video.